So I'm listening to a podcast. What's up, everybody? I'm just starting and talking. And it's Kyle Meinke of M Live, and he's talking about Denzel Mims. And he's saying, like, I don't know how much longer he's going to be on this team. We could hear in the next day or so that he's gone. And I was just like, what is this dude talking about? And then I get home from work, and he has been cut. <laughs> like, it was done. So here's what we see. Um, the Detroit Lions are dealing with several injuries. We know that. Blah, 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 blah. They are waving wide receiver Denzel Mims after an ankle injury led to a calf injury in rehab. So basically what we're hearing happened is he had the ankle injury. He was rehabbing the ankle and it led to what may have been a strained calf um, a tear. Who knows? Right. Like I just am recovering from a strain cap in case anybody was wondering, uh, but, which none of you are, but I'm starting to feel better. So that's good. I do feel bad for Mims, though. Um, so the six foot three, 207 pound, 25 year old should again attract interest when healthy, but he is not healthy. So let's go back to that trade. We traded. Remember? a seventh round pick or a sixth round pick, but basically it was completely contingent on if he made the team, he is not making the team. We caught him. So we don't have to lose a pick. If I remember the trade correctly, that's what's happening. Um, this article didn't talk about that, but that's what you get when you have national articles. Uh, this is an a local article. This was just off CBS. So, it asked the question, and I need to ask the question, what's next? So we're going to go in two directions on what's next. We're going to go with the good and why it's just fine, and the wide receiver depth's going to be okay, and that even means with the Jamison Williams injury, and that means with St. Brown tweaking his ankle, okay, he'll be back by the regular season. It's okay. I am a little worried about those ankles for St. Brown, though. I am a little worried about that. But we're going to talk about the good, and we're going to talk about the reason for concern. But first, hit a comment. Do you think the Lions wide receiver depth is okay? Um, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. But here's what we're looking at with the Lions. We have a depth chart that basically we know who our starters are going to be. It's going to be St. Brown. It's going to be Josh Reynolds, and it's going to be Marvin Jones Jr. You're going to sprinkle in Khalif Raymond. He's your fourth. OK, and now there is up for grabs that fifth wide receiver spot. And if we keep two, I don't know. But based on what I'm seeing, it's between three players, three players, Chase Coda. All right. Out of Oregon, formerly of UCLA, who's been playing well, who played really well in the preseason game one and has been also playing well from all of reports coming out of joint practices with the Jags. You have Antoine Green, who has flashed, but Campbell has said, we need more out of him. And then you have Dylan Drummond, who news just continues to be good all the time with him. So it's down to those three guys. The question is, after you get past the first four wide receivers, if there's any injuries going on um, in early in the season, do you trust Antoine Green to come in and play in the regular season in the NFL? Do you trust Chase Cota? Do you trust Dylan Drummond? Do they have what it takes? Now, here's what I do want to talk about real quick is how good are our wide receivers based on grades? Because I do have some, some nerves on it. Amon Ross St. Brown had a receiving grade of 90.4 or an offensive grade of 90.7. That is number two out of 113 receivers that recorded enough snaps to count in PFF's rankings. The next best receiver is 37th. That's not bad. That's Khalif Raymond. Okay, just outside. I mean, that's a starter level quality. There are at minimum 64 wide receivers who start. A lot of teams start three. So you have two starter level players. He was graded at 72. Josh Reynolds was 79th out of 113. Now we're starting to get a little back there. All right. But good enough to play. Maybe not every snap, but half the snaps, most of the snaps. Marvin Jones Jr. last year was not that good. He was a 94th rated. But here's the thing about Marvin Jones Jr., He's never been, if you remember back when he was at Detroit, he was a contested catch guy. He's never been this get a ton of separation 
guy. That's never what Marvin Jones Jr.'s game was, and it continued to not be that last year. I still think he can catch the football. I still think even at his advanced age, yes, you heard me right. I said it, advanced age. I still think that he can be a good football player for this team especially if he only needs to be good for six or seven games until J-Mo gets back. But after him, nobody else has even played enough snaps, including Mims, to even record a grade that would be rated. If they did, it would have been Denzel Mims, and that was the same grade as Marvin Jones at 59.8. So that's the bad. What about the good? Here's the good on this. Look at our offensive line. Like, look at it from left to right. Taylor Decker, Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, whoever you want at right guard, whether it's Halapului Vati Vaitai or Graham Glasgow, and then Panay Sewell at uh, tackle. So our offensive line is fully intact. And what I think we started realizing last year is that if that offensive line is fully intact, and we've talked about this on this channel over and over and over again. What a good offensive line does is it makes everybody else on the roster seem better. It's that simple. It makes everybody on the roster seem better. You can do this in one of two ways. Either you can do the Dolphins way, and you have Tyreek Hill, and you have Jalen Waddle, and you have all the speed, and everything gets done so fast that it makes the offensive line look better because everything's so much faster. Or you can do it the way... The Lions have done it, which is you have a phenomenal offensive line and they are going to make your position players look better because they give the quarterback more time. They have bigger holes for the running back, things like that. Or you can be the Philadelphia Eagles and just have it all <laughs> stinking Eagles. All right. They're, they're good. All right. So with that, we have to realize, I think we're still going to be okay, but we are one injury away from being in trouble. If St. Brown gets hurt, and you're talking about Raymond Reynolds and Jones, and then the next man up is a undrafted rookie or a seventh round rookie. Now, all of a sudden you're starting to say, Ooh, I'm not so confident in that. Here's the other good news. Offensive line is great. Sam Laporta is going to be the best receiving tight end we've had. Now, I'm not saying he's already better than Hawkinson. Calm down. Okay, but Hawkinson proved if he's the number one option, no good. No good. It didn't work for him. Um, I think Laporta can ease up some of the burden on the wide receivers to catch passes, especially over the middle and underneath. And we have Jameer Gibbs. So we're going to have a solid running game with Montgomery Gibbs. Gibbs can play and be a weapon in the passing game. And I think Laporta can do the exact same thing. So there's enough weapons around these receivers. There's a good enough, offense, off, good enough offensive line. And by good enough, I mean there's a very good offensive line that I still think we're going to be fine. So there's my whole thing. But it, there's the question. What's next? There's your answer. And, uh, hey, again, like, subscribe, comment. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.